Hello everyone and welcome to a new tutorial of Rhino and Grasshopper. In this uh, session I will teach you how to import uh, data, GIS data from OpenStreetMap directly into Rhino and Grasshopper. So you can import uh, different urban um, information that will be very useful to create maps and extrude buildings and identify motorways. Basically if you don't have access to GIS data like um, shade files. This will help you to retrieve inf urban information like buildings, trees, vegetation, etc. Uh, that is available in OpenStreetMap. So the first thing we have to do is just I want to remember to set up properly the units in Rhino. Uh, there should be meters so you just click here you open um, and then you just set up the model units of the document to meters. After that what we need to do is go to uh, Elk uh, and put for Rhino, put Elk, and so the Elk is is this tool or plugin that will help you to generate the maps. It has three basically three components: the latest version, which is location, OSM data, and USGS uh, topography. And download the latest version, which is the 2.2.2 from February 2016. So once you download it, I have it here. You have to go to the folder um, you will need to unblock uh, extract and after you extract copy the whole folder to the library folders in uh, grasshopper so you go to grasshopper open the special folders um, go to components folder uh, go to libraries and then there is the elk uh, you copy the whole folder there you have to restart everything and then um, it's operational. If you just go here to uh, extras, then you will have the elk. The difference between these and previous versions uh, is basically there now the elk has only three components. You don't need to worry. Previously, there used to be many components, and that's why there are many YouTube videos about this um, showing multiple components. But here you have the OSMS data and the location, and this will be enough to create all the uh, extract all the information from OpenStreetMap. Now it's time to extract the data from OpenStreetMap. So you go to OpenStreetMap.org, you click on export, and then you can select the area you want to extract. If the area is too large, um, it's going to be too complicated. What ELK is working is just simply analyzing the different nodes or points extracted from um, OpenStreetMap and then translate that into <clears throat> curves or polylines and then use that for creating the, the maps or extracting the information. So here we can select manually the area. If the area is too large, you may need to select multiple areas uh, multiple times, or I will select it after there and then after there, and then you just click export. Once you click export, it will download it here and you can rename it, that's what I did. So back to Rhino, you have the components here. You need to use the component location and you drag it here to the canvas. Then you need to define a file path, correct, and connect it there. And so you need to define the file path. So now I have the name of the OSMS, OS, OSM uh, file already, I simply change the name, rename it to Adelaide CBD and put OK. It will take a couple of seconds until it's imported. Once it is there, we're going to work, we're going to drag this OSM data. OK, so here it is. Uh, here it is the OSMS data. I'm going to create several ones, but um, this will be enough. So the OSMS data is where you're going to st start choosing. We just right click, choosing the different futures and sub, sub futures but let's start with the highways there are multiple futures here but the highways is the one that contains all the streets and and motorways and and roads so let's choose that one after choosing that you need to connect connect this OSM data point out here and the file path there it would take a little bit to create or extract all the points because there are many highways. So we need to be a little bit patient. The same way we will do it with buildings, we can do it with leisure, we can do it with railways, etc., and I will, or waterways, and I will show you all this today. 
So we just need to be, uh, wait a little bit. Um, and then I will show you how to even create uh, different um, subtypes. And so you can differentiate between different types of highways, for example, or different type of buildings, commercial buildings, residential buildings, etc. So once we have it here, you just can go to perspective. Sometimes with these imports, imports, and you don't you don't see the model, and then many people struggle a lot to try to find it. What you have to do is just go here to your Grasshopper Canvas, and with the scroll um, button of your mouse, click on top, and then use this little icon here. Click on the icon which is zoom, and it will zoom it automatically there. So you see all the points. Now the next step is just to join these points, okay? To create curves. So for that, we need a polyline. Here is the polyline. We just join the vertices and there are options, close and open. Well, what happens if we have a close one? It will try to close the polyline. So um, in this case, it's automatically enclosed by default, but um, we can put a Boolean toggle here, connect it and then connect it to true. So you will see what's gonna happen is they're gonna be trying to connect all the polylines so it will look awkward. But this is very useful for buildings, but not for um, street lines. So we're gonna put it in false and we see all the, these points, but to, it's better if we just right click there and make it and disable the preview so you see the lines. Now what happened is these lines are represented all in the default color of uh, Rhino and Grasshopper, we can color it. Now to color, we can use a custom preview. We bring the geometry there, and then we can put a color with color swatch. So we have a white color. Okay, so we can choose any color we want. That's it. Now, what happened is like, I would like to choose a different type of tree, uh, streets, uh, just the motorways, for example. So you click here and you choose, let's imagine that we, we, we copy this or we add it again. We add it from here. And then we just click on highways. And after choosing the type, we go to the subtype and then we'll open this. So you will see different types of streets you can choose one or two so for example i would like to go for cycle way and so you will see this information and then you again you have to connect it to to the so you see all the cycle ways so one way to also to review what sort of information we have is using the panel so put this double bar there and then so you will be able here to display different type of data and see you can use the data tree to understand so each of these collections of points will be one line and um, this is for example a subtype uh, cycle way but it will happen if we remove this and we use let's imagine just a motorway okay we take a couple of seconds and then we just see only motorways. So what we're going to do is let's remove this panel for now and let's copy the whole, just drag it and then click out and then you will copy. And let's connect the vertices there. So now we can disable this preview and change the color. So I want my waterways in red. And of course I will disable the preview here okay so you will see there are a lot of them are motorways so it doesn't make any sense because there is no differentiation so we go to the subtypes and instead of motorway i will add a sack away to make it interesting couple of seconds mm -hmm. something where is happening here oh they are there but um Oh, it's this preview that it was there all the time. Okay, so these are the cycleways, okay? And we can put a beautiful blue blue color here. Yeah, that, let's say, this blue color. Now we can copy again the whole 
the whole definition, the whole uh, component, set of components, and drag it again. So what we can do is group them and put it a name. Um, so this will be cycle, sorry, cycle ways. And this can move here and we put here all highways. Um, then here we can choose something different. Uh, we can choose, oh, sorry. Uh, you know, subtypes instead of suck. We can add several ones. So we can we can remove this and we can add, uh, let's say pedestrian. And I want to also find, uh, uh, you have a street lamps, which is good. And you want secondary raceways, residential. Let's find and and food weights. Okay, so we add those two. It will take a little bit. Okay, it's thinking. So let's wait for a day. Good. Now we can change the color and let's change this color to uh, kind of like yellow. Okay, so you have here all the footpaths. And we have all the other types also differentiated. So this is a good way uh, to differentiate different um, polylines. But we'll leave it there just to move on. And then we're going to put this pedestrian. Or better better than pedestrian is uh, food, food paths. OK? So we have here different names. OK, um, let me save this definition. Forget out this elk importation. Um, what is that? Yeah, um, I will put it in my desktop just for now. Okay. So once we have done this, what we need to do is to focus on what we're going to do is just to focus on in buildings. So we grab here, we bring it here again, the data and we choose buildings. And just leave it like that as a building, we just connect it, building here, uh, path there, and it will take a little bit until the buildings appear. There are, I'm gonna show you now two ways to represent buildings. One is using the three-dimensional information that it comes from OSM, and the other is just extruding uh, the buildings that you can generate. Okay, so let's wait a bit. So now we have here the, the buildings, again, our points. So what we need to do is we can copy this part of the definition, drag it. Uh, it's taking a little bit. And then we disconnect all of this. So we don't have this definition here because very useful and we just create multiple copies of this. That's the best. Right. Okay. So now what we got is connect here and the buildings, we're gonna give them a different color to differentiate. It can be red. So we dis disable this. So you see all the buildings footprints. Now, now there are it's very important to put through for the polylines so the polylines will be completely closed, okay? And we're not gonna have any issue with the buildings, generation of the buildings. So now you have only the polylines, but what happens if here we choose 3D, create 3D buildings? It will take a little bit, and but the buildings are not gonna appear because I disable this component. So we need to wait for the component to finish. It finished the calculation, but it doesn't display. So when you put here and display, it will display all the 3D, 3D buildings there. And what happened? If the user who input these buildings or draw these footprints in OpenStreetMap indicated the height, you will have these buildings automatically extruded. That's why it's so important the person who is behind the editions of OpenStreetMap, the person, the group, or whoever is editing, because this is edited by just um, users 
of the platform because it's an open source. So it's really, really crucial that when they do in the footprints, they they do it properly. They indicate the height. So we have heights here and we can bake all this uh, directly and generate the three buildings if they have the height. But in, in this case, we have only four or five buildings with height, the rest now. So it's, it's kind of, um, it's useful to have the footprints now, but not very useful if we want the buildings. And the other cases, all the cities, the data is more complete and you will be able to generate the buildings right away. But because we don't have that option, what we can do is disconnect here. I will disconnect this. Oh gosh, okay. And then I will create a, also here I will turn it off. And then I will create here something called a VREP. Um, oh, sorry, I have to, it was my mistake here. Um, this should be connected. What I'm gonna disconnect is the preview. These two, we're gonna move them there. And I'm gonna disconnect this one here. So I can connect the VREP there. And then the VREP will be connected to the geometry. So now we're gonna have geometries generated there or these be reps that we can bake, okay? So these are our building footprints. So these are the building footprints, see? And we can now just right click and bake them or click on the scroll of your mouse and then bake them, okay? But before bake them, it's really useful if you create layers and you name the layers appropriately. So I just create layers called buildings footprints, building footprints that has, has to be grass or street or whatever. So we can rename these like, uh, for example, footpaths. And we can put this recreation and we can create, this is building footprints. We can create a new, um, a new layer. Okay, or we can duplicate or, do, or create a sub layer. Let's create a new layer. And this layer, I'm going to call it railways because we're going to do that. And this one, waterways. So what we're going to do is we can bake this, this building footprints. We just need to right click here and bake them and choose the correct um, layer. So these are building footprints. They go there. OK, it takes a little bit. And then I will disable this. So you are able to see the building footprints there. Okay, what you see is the custom preview. So it's very important to remove. So if you change here the color of the building footprint and you put, I don't know, a kind of gray, but you will see them in gray. Right, so what we can do now is, this color doesn't help that much, okay. Or even darker. So what we're gonna do is we can extrude these ones. And if you have the information individually, if it is not a very large area, you can extrude it manually. There is not gonna be a problem. Uh, if not, I will show you how to extrude them automatically, but um, you just choose one. And then you just click in the command extrude surface. Uh, sorry, extrude surface. And then you just need to include the direction, um, 001 X, and then you just need to put the height that you need. So let's say 50 meters. So that extruded. And then we can extrude the next one and just right click again and repeat. It goes in the, because I have this, all these points on, um, it's just trying to connect the, is the knot. So now we can do this and um, let's say uh, 200 meters. Okay, so we have there a huge tower. Okay, so we can do this manually. And if the area is not too large, it's not that difficult to do it. If the information from OpenStreetMap is incomplete. So this one option is one method, okay? And it's really important you create B-reps or surfaces that are, um, yes, extrusions that are B-reps because then and other tutorials, I will teach you how to export these into point clouds and it works better with B-reps. Um, but anyway, I will explain that uh, when I create a new tutorial. For now, this is enough. 
we can turn off this layer. Oh, of course, these were never in that layer, so we just can we just can edit them um, uh, and put them in that layer, or just I'm gonna delete it right now. Turn off that layer, okay? So this one option. The other option you have here is use an extrusion. So I'll put extrude, and we use we connect here the base that we're extruding. You need set to define the direction. And now we are going to wait a little bit. And then we need to define the factor, which is the how many times in that unit set we're going to extrude. So it should be, let's say, um, 15 meters. OK? If you do this and you set up properly to meters, the distances, you're not going to have any issue. It will be display here. It takes a little bit. But sometimes you do this and it doesn't happen is because the units are wrong. So when you put 15, it's 15 millimeters, for example. A good way to, to check that it written is correct is use distance in the command. The units, define the units if you want uh, in meters. And then measure here and it's 14.2. Or repeat it and measure the size of the block and it's 190 meters. It makes sense. So in this way, you have all the buildings extruded in the same height. You can also use a list, and each point, each BREP have a, a individual height, and then connect that to the factor. But if you don't have that information available, this is a very rapid way to do it. And then you can bake. You can bake the extrusion, the extrusions. Sorry, uh, we just bake them, and then we put it in buildings. And we say okay. So it will take a little bit again, and they are there in buildings. So these buildings are in red, okay? Um, so it's a fantastic and rapid way. Let me change this to white, for example, okay? So this is the fantastic and rapid way to do it. And all of them were extruded, and then you have a 3D view of the of the city. You can use here um, Arctic. Uh, to display a different presentation of this. So you see here um, your buildings. But this is this is rapid way. Um, of course, you want to the precise. I, I recommend you to check the heights and, and, and use the other method. We're going to turn off this for now. And we are going to turn off this as well. And we're just going to leave it like this so we don't make our model very slow. So all of this is for buildings. These are the visualization of the building, the extrusion, and the VREPs that we generated. And we can also choose here different subtypes of buildings. So you have apartments, bungalows, cathedrals, chapels. Um, I can show you quickly an example of this. Um, if we copy only this information here. Uh, just let's wait a minute. Um, so we have here, and then I want to choose another subtype. I will turn on only this this preview. I want to choose a uh, subtype. So click here, click subtype, and I'm going to put the apartments. And let's check what happened when the apartments are there. So we just have these buildings. Of course, the information may not be accurate. So you need to double check this information. And then let's choose other ones like, I think there was one interesting one. I check in the subtypes, apartments, and I want commercial. Uh, so there will appear a couple of extra more there. Look, these are the commercial buildings. And then you can use a custom preview here. Uh, let's see if it works only bringing this here and connecting building to the geometry and then changing the color to, let's say violet, why not? No, it's not working. So you know that now. Um, this building information I think also can so it's better if we go and connect a VREP. 
let's do a trial. Uh, yes, that's the building, the 3D already. So you, you connect the buildings there directly to the view rep. And this is a shortcut. You don't need to create a polyline. You can connect. This is the three-dimensional element or the three-dimensional uh, building that goes directly into the VREP. And from there, you can bake it or you can display it. OK, so this is another option. And let's turn off this and then let's change the color. I think the color doesn't change, but the, the VREPs are there. Look, uh, select them. OK, so this is another option. So all of these are buildings. Let's make a um, let's make a group here, and we put building sub subtypes, and let's connect here just buildings. Okay, so now something extra we can do is like model the parks or green areas. So of course you, you, you can you can explore what sort of information you have there available. A good way to do it to explore if it works or no is you just connect here and you just connect here. I will generate the building. So you need to you need to be careful with this otherwise we'll make very slow your machine. You need to select first the type of information you want to extract before connecting otherwise we'll take a bit. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to, you can connect here a panel or you just can put this to eyes and then you will get a panel. So when you get there, you connect and you see, you will see all the information there is there available. Okay, but what happens if you select something that it is, for example, aerial way? Let's wait there. Look, the no data was collected. So this can help you. You can turn off the visualization and you use the panel just to know if the data exists or not. Let's go to, for example, amenity. Select it. Yes, there are. Then you turn on the data and then you can see all the amenity and then you can try to create whatever it is. So here I want to use, uh, I want to choose green areas that are maybe in leisure. Okay. Yes, they are. So we remove this, and here we will gonna need the whole definition here. We need the polyline, and we are gonna need another color. The color should be green. Okay, green. Okay, and we turn off. This specialization. So you see here in green, but it's a it's a green that is not very useful. Okay, that green is better. So you see here the polyline. So you see if that you need it in close or open. Yeah. Um, then you can also convert this into a B red to see how it works. Or you can use also geometry. Uh, geometry or so and or surface. Let's see if it works. That's the geometry. Yeah, but because they are not closed, they are not show as a surface. So the other is be rep and the other is surface. So let's make some trials how it, the information happens. So you see here surface, it works, but there are some surface that are showing this element, the data conversion, it didn't work because they were all open. So if we put close, then our some data is not properly done. Okay, but these are showing the greenery. So what you it's, it's useful in that sense, uh, you have a overlapping shape. So these are represent the green parks, all the parklands around um, and in the middle of the uh, the city of Adelaide. Here is the botanic gardens and the, all the parklands along the river and, and around the 
city of Adelaide. So what we're going to do is you can bake this and we're going to create here some a new layer called Parkland. Parkland. Okay, so you grab this and you bake it and you send it to Parkland. Okay, and see, you will see what's going on. Now we turn off this and this as well. So you will see here what happened. There are extra surfaces. They were baked there in Parkland, you see. So there are overlapping ones. Then you decide if you want to keep these ones or delete them, for example. Okay, but you have now, let me go to Parkland and choose a green color. So you see here, um, shaded. So you see here the, all the green areas around and you can turn it off or on whatever. Let's turn it off for now. Just I'm just showing you the geometry didn't work. Let's see the VREP. The VREP you still get this issue as well. And this issue is because there may be some polylines that are not properly done. Okay, and also the other problem may be the overlapping element. So you need to check what the information after you explode it or you just bake it. Um, some of these are not properly done or not correspond to that information. And so you need to do some data curation or just simply delete things that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so that it is really important. So we keep that this for now. Okay, we can connect to geometry. Let's see. It worked. The geometry works better, I think. But um, some geometries, that's why they didn't close them because some geometries may be wrong. Okay. After this, what we're going to do is these are, let's say, park land, park or green spaces, green spaces. And I want to do a couple of extra more. One is the, this is what I select. It's better to select before. The one that I already tried before is the um, waterway. Okay. And the other one I want to create is the railways. Where is the railway? Okay. So in this way, we speed up the process, which is copy. Copy back again here, and we just connect to the first one here and to the second one. We're doing this as fast as we can. So we have here the elements. We don't need to show this. And now we can use the polyline. So the first one where the waterways, I think, uh, yes. These are the waterways, so they should be watercolor, right? Beautiful blue. So I know I noticed that um, there's something wrong with my blue color previously selected. So this is the blue. So this blue here doesn't make any sense. So I'll just change it to brown or other color, okay? So there's the waterways. And then the other one is the waterways is important to see how we can make it again um, a surface or a B-rep. So let's connect it there. This shows again the same problem, but it is maybe because look this happening in this sort of um, very awkward and weird lakes or the are not closed, but look, even when you close that, they, they also behave very well. Okay, so it's about the way the data was input in OpenStreetMap. So this is what we can do, or we just simply connect directly there, or we just bake it and then we make it, uh, we edit the data. And the other one that I want to connect here are the railways. So railways, it will be beautiful to show it in black. Okay, so we have the trams, so this is the trams and the trains and all the railways. Uh, and then we just can bake again this thing. We can bake it there, bake it, and this go to 
railways okay and then we just need to come here and change the color to a dark gray um, and this will be waterways and we can also bake them um, let's go to we can bake look the lines these lines are open that is one is the problem okay is that inconsistency so we can bake them close them and then create the surface it does or we can create the surface as it is and then edit the surface so there are many, multiple ways or we can use these to trace etc so let's bake it like as it is oh sorry I, it went to the wrong let's choose here the waterways yeah and then let's choose here and bake it to the waterways correct go there and waterways should be of course a nice blue that you see there so all of these are the the data we extracted so now we'll bake this let's group it let's put waterways and let's group it again and let's put railways okay so we created a lot of data we extracted a lot of data from OpenStreetMap now what we can do is turn off all the definitions you will see and then just turn on all our layers that were baked if you want the footprints or whatever and then we can change the colors of the buildings of course we can make it gray this gray doesn't help really <laughs> so we can we can choose another another color and we can choose a better way of visualizing this like for example using other uh, the arctic and so we see something i think yeah the parklands have some problems we have to correct it but um, anyway this this is a is a way that we can um display different information create rapidly the very rapidly the uh, three-dimensional model of the city and which is, is fantastic so that's it um i hope this will have this has been a very useful um tutorial and see you next time thank you